Hi there. In case we haven't met yet, I'm Belinda. Welcome to my channel. I want to show you how to make a dry point engraving, also known as a dry point etching, using a piece of recycled plastic. In a previous video, we used a piece of recycled plastic from a blueberry container to make a monotype. In this video, we're going to use a piece of plastic from a lettuce container and a twisted scribe or an engraving tool to scratch some lines into the plastic so that we can ink those, then wipe and print the line work onto a sheet of paper. I hope this process is so fun that you'll be pulling out all your recycled plastic and turning them into little squares of printmaking plates. This is a process the entire family can play with. You'll be able to trace your image through the clear plastic and so with a little supervision for youngsters, because you'll be using a little sharp tool, everybody in the family can make stuff. You can make self-portraits, pictures of your dog, pictures of your house, superheroes, whatever suits your fancy. So I'm going to demonstrate the process here for you step by step. Let's take a look at dry point printmaking from recycled plastic. Plastic food containers make great printmaking plates. With an engraving scribe, you can scratch enough texture in the surface of the plastic to hold ink. When this is inked, and wiped, it can be pressed against paper to print a dry point. This little dog was engraved from a package of tomatoes and was inked, wiped, and transferred with the pressure of a cereal spoon. After the ink was dry, I added watercolor to one of the prints. This was a piece of plastic from a strawberry container. I took the corners off and rounded them, and I left the line work simple so that it's reminiscent of a comic strip frame. This style of dry point is probably the simplest and easiest one to hand transfer with a spoon. No cross hatching, just line work. And this style works beautifully to add watercolor or colored pencil. Now let's go over the details so that you can make one of these too. Look for the flattest area on a plastic food container. Very often it's the top or the lid. You can soak the paper labels off and then roll the paper away and then use a little bit of vegetable oil to massage into the remaining glue to get it off the plastic. It's very important not to scratch the plastic so don't use anything abrasive to get the glue off. Cut away any embossed logos or ridges so that you've got a flat piece of plastic and then trim that into smaller sizes. If this is your first dry point, Work small, no bigger than about four inches by four inches or four inches by six inches. In this example, I'm gonna work in a six inch by six inch because you'll be able to see it easier, but I recommend starting small. Print and trim your reference photo so it's the same size as your plate. And before we begin, let's talk about line work. The little dog was made with lots of consecutive lines scratched very close together to look similar to fur. For your first dry point, I'd like to recommend that you keep your lines simple. Just a basic outline of the shapes in your reference photo. You'll increase your chances of success if your line work is simple when you're hand transferring. Tape your reference photo in place and then align your printmaking plate over the reference photo and tape that as well. In this example, I've taped the reference photo and the plate to a sheet of mat board, but if you don't have mat board, you can tape it to a piece of cardboard or a clipboard, a piece of masonite, or the back of a sheet baking pan. I'm tracing the outline of the image with an engraving tool with a cork handle. If you don't have that, you can attach a sewing needle to a chopstick. Be careful not to go through the plastic you just want to scrape a line that's deep enough to hold ink, which you'll be surprised is not very deep at all. With medium pressure, I'm using the point, the stainless steel point of the tool to trace shapes from this late 1950s photograph. Each piece of plastic that you use will have different hardness and different resistance to the needle. To get the hang of it, just draw the needle across the surface and think of it as a little bit deeper than a scratch. You can see in this image, the line work that I've got here is visible, but I haven't gone very deep. An old phone book is a perfect support for inking and or cleaning a plate. If you don't have a phone book, put some newsprint down. This is Akua Intaglio ink, and I've made a dauber by rolling a piece of craft felt with masking tape around the belly so that I can push ink into the incised line work. Wear gloves when you're handling the ink and in small circular motions, push the ink all across the plate so that you're aiming at getting the ink to embed in your incised line work. 
If you don't have felt to make an ink dauber, you can use a craft paintbrush to push the ink around. The phone book is also very handy to hold the plate in place by flipping over a piece of uh, one of the pages and then also by tearing the pages off and rolling them into a ball. They're effective for wiping ink away from the plate. Use a light hand when you're wiping the ink because you want to clear the uppermost surface but leave ink in the embedded line work that you scratched in with your tool. You can also use newspaper to do this and as each sheet gets inky, roll it inside a new fresh sheet so that it makes a little ball to remove successive layers of ink from the surface of the plate. You can start to see that the plate is becoming transparent, enough ink is being removed. At this point, it's helpful to be able to see your line work so that your wiping is gentler over the line work and a little more firm where you don't have any details. This is the point where we want our ball to remain flat so it stays on the uppermost surface so it helps to bang it against the table or the palm of your hand. We don't want any folds or wrinkles in the newsprint or the phone book pages to dip down and remove ink from the incised line work. We want to just pull the ink off the uppermost surface. As more and more ink is removed, make sure your hands are working lighter and lighter with less and less pressure on the surface of the plate. If the back of the plate has gotten inky, it's helpful at this point to clear it so that you can see from the top surface where the ink is accumulated without being confused by what's stuck to the back of the plate. I'm using a piece of soft tarlatan. This is the tarlatan that's made by Akua. It's softer than traditional tarlatan, which is basically starched cheesecloth. This one has no starch in it and it is washable. You can wash it and reuse it over and over again. If you're using Akua inks because they wash with soap and water. Once your line work is revealed, you want to wipe perpendicular to the line. If you wipe with the line in the same direction as the line, your cloth or your tarlatan has a chance to dip down and remove ink. So you don't want to go in the same direction as the lines. Go across the lines and again wipe lighter and lighter as you go. Plate tone is the ink that's remaining around your line work on the plate. If you want to adjust the plate tone, you can wrap a paper towel around your fingertip and buff some areas of the plate completely clean. While we were working on inking and wiping the plate, I had a sheet of printmaking paper soaking in a tub of water for five minutes. The paper was pressed between towels to blot it, and I'm using a cereal spoon to press the paper into the line work. I'm checking the image to see if I'm getting a transfer, and I notice that I've got a skip in the impression. Either the plate or the paper move during the transfer process, doubling the figure. I'll secure the plate to the board that I've got it on with a little piece of packing tape after I re-ink and re-wipe the plate. The packing tape is thin enough that it shouldn't affect the transfer of the image. With the plate adhered to my surface, I can focus on keeping my hand on the paper so it doesn't move. I'm also going to use a slightly thinner paper. This has a little bit more flexibility to it, which will allow it to dip down into the line work and pick up the ink. This time I'll be super careful to keep the contact between the paper and the plate stable so that there's no movement and no skipping on the printed image. Note that before I move my hand into a new position, I'm stabilizing the paper with my other hand to keep it from moving. Holding the paper in place, you can pick up and peek underneath to see how your line work is transferring. This is a good example of plate tone. You can see that all around the line work there is a bit of ink, like a transparent veil of grayish color. I'd like to pull another print with a little bit less plate tone, so I have re-inked and re-wiped the plate. I'm using the same BFK Reeves lightweight printmaking paper. The next day, the print is dry and I can paint it with watercolors. I'm using an angular half inch watercolor brush for this. And the brands of watercolors that I have on my palette are Winsor & Newton, Schmincke, um, as well as Graham. One of the things that made me choose this uh, image for my reference photo is that space above the figure and the car. So let's say I printed an edition of five of these. On each of them, I have the option to put something different 
in the area where the sky is. Additional elements can be drawn and painted. Wheat or rice paste can be used to attach background papers to that area in a process known as chin collé. If you have enough room, you can collage pattern or color to the background of your dry point or add elements that create a narrative to each individual piece in the addition. You're in charge of how many pieces you make in the addition and you can change every single one of them if you'd like. Now, when you're done watching this video, make sure that you visit my channel to look at any one of the watercolor and printmaking demos and tutorials that are there. And be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of the upcoming videos that I have in store for you. And while you're at it, visit my blog at belindadelpesco.com. Find the matching post to this video, which will be titled something along the lines of Recycled Plastic Dry Point Printing. And I'll have a list of all the supplies that I used with links so that you don't have to search all over the internet to find the pieces that you need in order to make your first dry point. So that's it in a nutshell. Happy printing to you. I hope you have fun. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.